In this video, I'm showing you how to print PETG with the ANIT A8. Come and join me! Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I would like to help you being more successful with 3D printing. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. So let's talk about printing PETG. Why would we choose PETG over PLA? Well, this depends on the purpose your printed part is going to be for. Mainly we can say that PETG seems to be very strong compared to PLA. It's not as hard as ABS and more flexible than PLA, which makes it harder to break. PLA is much more brittle. Layer adhesion seems also to be very good and it sticks very well to the bat. But this also brings some disadvantages. Sticking better to the bat also means that it can be harder to remove it if you have parts with your last surface touching the bat plate. Also the support material is harder to remove because of the better layer adhesion. PETG also needs a heated bed versus PLA, which can be printed without a heated bed. So using PETG seems in general a better choice for parts that need to be stronger and durable. We also have to take into account that the filament is also more expensive, but not much. Amazon Basics now has a PETG filament, which I am going to use for our test in this particular video. So let's first tune our slicer settings for PETG printing. The print temperature for the Amazon Basics PETG shall be between 230 and 240 degrees Celsius. So let's put 235 degrees in our settings. Bed temperature should be 80 degrees Celsius. Then we select the print speed. Recommended print speeds for PETG are around 60 mm per second, maybe a bit slower, so maybe you select 55. The cooling fan settings also need some attention. You have to choose whether you want maximum layer adhesion, meaning that your resulting prints get as strong as possible, or you want less stringing, the default setting would be to have no fan for the first two layers, and then full fan for the rest. If you want maximum durability and you don't care for stringing, turn off the fan for the whole print. Again, this very much depends on the purpose of the part you are printing. Then we should make sure that our nozzle distance is not too close. PTG does not need to be squeezed to the heat bed because it sticks really well. I have found that when you do the bad leveling with a piece of paper so the nozzle starts grabbing the paper, make sure that you find this point where you can barely feel the resistance of the nozzle. Check when you're doing your first print that the nozzle does not create skimming, which means it would uh, push around rest of filament. In terms of the bad surface, I don't recommend using Biltec or a similar plastic surface for PETG because it might be getting really hard to impossible to take the printed part off that surface. I chose to put painter's tape on my print bed, which turned out to give the best results. If you don't like the little lines that painter's tape sometimes causes on larger prints because of time gaps between the tape stripes, you can use larger sheets of painter's tape that are specially designed for 3D printers. I have put in a link in the description where you can get those from. And now we have set everything up for printing PETG. Let's start to print some plastic sticks with a loop at one end to compare how much stronger and less brittle is PETG compared to PLA. Actually, I'm going to do that in the next video in a very extensive way. But this time I'm just going to print them out to show you that it's working. Leaving a few words about the bed temperature. Heating up to the print bed to 80 degrees was really challenging to me, especially because my basement is currently between 12 to 18 degrees Celsius during winter. 
I found that printing PETG using my LUC enclosure helped a lot to stabilize the printing temperature and to speed up the bed heating up. Without the enclosure, it took about 20 minutes to heat up, with the enclosure just about 10 minutes. And during printing, I got a much more stable bed temperature. Getting off the parts from the print bed sometimes is challenging, just doing this with your hands. Recently, I've bought myself the BuildTech spatula, which I think is really cleverly designed to get parts off the bed pretty easily. And at the same time, it has a shape that prevents damage to the build surface. A link to the BuildTech spatula is in the description down below. Okay, the prints are done and we now have some PLA sticks in blue and some PETG sticks in pink. What are you going to do with them? In the next video, we are putting these PLA and TPU sticks to the test by trying to break them at room temperature, boiling them in water, baking them in the oven and freezing them in the fridge. Stay tuned for that video. Now let's look at the support material topic. Let's first print some part that needs some support material and let's see how easy it is to remove the support material afterwards. Okay, it seems to be a bit harder to remove that support. Probably you will need to apply more sanding and rasping to parts. A few final words about the Amazon Basic PETG. I'm overall happy with the quality, but I have one major complaint about the quality of the spool winding. It seems pretty unevenly spooled up, so you can see it here. Looking at the spool from the side. During printing I discovered that the material was crossed at least once, so I had to permanently um, be cautious about the filament not getting stuck. So my recommendation um, is check this first by unwinding a few meters first to see if there's any crossed windings, and if so, just pull the filament out underneath the crossing, that should fix it. Also always clip your filament to the spool after removing it from the printer. So that will prevent unaccidentally crossing off the filament windings. That's it for today. If you appreciate this video, please smash the like button, consider subscribing to my channel to support me creating new content for you and hit the bell notification icon if you want to get notified every time I post a new video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.